Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 12 of Nature's Epions podcast. <clears throat> Today's episode, I don't really got a whole lot to talk about. I don't know. I just saw a couple things come up in the news that's sort of relevant to like nature and wildlife and all that kind of jazz that we talk about on here. And I thought, what the hell? We'll, we'll do a, a little chit chat about it. And so one of the articles I saw that came up in the news recently was Michigan man. For the first time, it's not Florida man. It's actually Michigan man this time. They, a Michigan man forfeited or surrendered 838 budgie birds to the Humane Society. 838 fucking birds to the fucking Humane Society. Could you fucking imagine working there? And this guy rolls in. With I don't even know. Probably covered in fucking feathers and bird shit. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'd like to make a donation. <laughs> yeah, I got 838 fucking birds in the back of my pickup. You might be interested. I don't know. You just sit there at the desk like, pardon me. Like, is this, like, what date is it? Is this April 1st? The fuck? 838 fucking birds. Imagine being that guy dumping those birds there. Like, you'd have to come up with, like, some kind of fucking story not to look like a complete and total asshole. Like, okay. Uh, yeah. I I found a colony of birds stowed away inside a tree. Uh, I rescued them all. Uh, I'm a hero. Uh, but you know, I know these birds won't survive outside in the winter. So I figured I'd bring them in here. Yeah. They were all wild caught budgie birds. And here you go. I don't know. I don't like, so this is the story behind it. This was what the article said. It was Michigan man surrenders, 838 budgie birds. Um, apparently his father had, basically became sort of like a hoarder i suspect at least in terms of birds of budgie birds and apparently he had a like an entire room just like dedicated to like these budgie birds where they like i don't even know what the fuck he did he must have just been like throwing in bags of seed and like closing the door real quick i don't <laughs> like like how would you open you how would you open the door without all those fuckers flying at you and attacking you like that fucking movie Attack of the Seagulls and you're, you're like running in the phone booths to like save your life. You would have to like put all the seed at the bottom of the door on the outside and use like a fucking leaf blower to blast it all out under the door so you don't get fucking attacked and the rest of your house is just ravaged by fucking birds. I wonder what like I wonder what his plan was. I wonder what was going on. Was this like a small business startup? Could you imagine being that son? Like you go visit your dad. It's probably been like a few years since he's got fucking 838 budgie birds chilling in a room. It's probably like some critical thing happened. <clears throat> some critical thing happened in the family. You know, the death of like his wife, the son's mom. You know, things that kind of, things got weird, you know, after the death, you know, people kind of took some time to cope with it in their own ways. So, you know, they don't name anybody in this article, but we'll call him Jimmy. Jimmy goes over to his dad, Bill's house. Don't know the name of the dad either. We're just going to call him Bill. So it's Jimmy and Bill. So Jimmy goes over to his dad's house and he's just like, you know, knocks on the door. Dad opens the door, looks at him. Eyes like widen, life in his eyes after being lifeless for the past six, eight months. Oh, son, you're visiting. Jimmy, you're here. Yeah, yeah, Dad, I'm here. Figured I was in town, I'd come say hello. You know, it's been a while. I haven't seen you since, you know, Mom and all. Why, why are you covered in bird shit? 
Why do you have a bunch of little tiny feathers all over your sweater? Oh, uh, that's just, uh, I bought this really, I just came back from the park, uh, son, uh, I was feeding the pigeons and stuff, and I didn't realize how, you know, how crazy these pigeons were, they just started shitting all over me, so I just got back, and, uh, the feathers, uh, I bought this crappy pillow at Ikea, it was a feather pillow, it must have torn in my sleep, or there's a hole in it or something, I, yeah, I don't know, there's feathers, Oh, okay, Dad, that's that's kind of weird, but, you know. All right, well, come in, Jimmy. I'll, I'll pour you a pot of tea or coffee, whatever you like. So, you know, Jimmy walks into the house, sits down, you know. Probably does, doesn't notice any, like, bird shit or feathers anywhere. Because, you know, they were all confined to that room. You know, so he starts cooking. Or just put on the pot of coffee or whatever. Sits down. You know. Start reminiscing about old times. Catching up on how each other have been. Then all of a sudden, you know. Jimmy's phone goes off. And he's got some stupid ass ringtone. Because it's, you know. That's what stupid ass people named Jimmy do. They have stupid ass ringtones. And you know, it's like bird sounds. It's. His dad's eyes just like dilate. He's like, oh no. What have you done? And all of a sudden the fucking room full of birds just starts fucking going and going. And his son's just like, what in the fuck is that sound? His dad's just like, look, looks like in horror, like I've been caught. I've been found out. What do I do? Jimmy just looks at his dad. Son. Or dad. What in the fuck is that sound? You're hearing things, Jimmy. That's nothing. Don't worry about it. It's none of your fucking business. You know, Jimmy pushes past his elderly father. You know, not too too hard. He's got a bum knee from when he used to play football back in college. And, you know, spent his life roofing. So just like darts past them. Goes up the stairs. By the time he's like mid level through the stairs, like you know in the, you know in the summer when it's like really hot, and you got the AC cranked, and the upstairs is always hotter than the downstairs, especially if like I don't know your HVAC system isn't that great, but and you know how like warm air rises, so the upstairs is always warmer than the downstairs, so you can feel like on really hot days. You can feel like that distinct cutoff between like the cool, like main floor to like, as you like walk up to like the hotter upstairs, you know, you can actually feel yourself like pass through that sometimes. It's like you're moving through like, like the air streams. You just kind of like pass through. It's like that, but the smell of bird shit. So he's just passing through this fucking mist of bird shit stink. And he's just. And he's just, he's just, he's just like engulfed. He's just like hit by just like, whoa. It's fucking bird shit. Dad, what are you, what are you? And he, and his ears, like he can't hear anything. He just he barges in through that door and he's just, you know, he has to really push the door open because there's probably like four inch layer of bird shit at the door. And like a bunch of bird corpses, probably. He just like shoves it open. It's like it's like pushing like a really heavy shovel full of snow. He's just fucking pushing it up. And then it's just fucking. He's just he's just maimed and attacked by all these birds. There's birds everywhere. A part of him enjoys it because he thinks it's the coolest thing ever. Just being like laced with birds but another part of him is disgusted because his he took his shoes off at the door and his socks are all covered in bird shit now so he goes and has a discussion with his dad his dad's like in complete like emotional denial about what's going on he's like dad you got a problem here 
you know, I turned a blind eye to, like, the fucking towers of old newspapers. You know, I wasn't too worried about your stacks of hockey cards that you keep saying you're going to strike it big with the rare card, and you just keep collecting all these five-cent hockey cards, and you just... You know, your house is a real fucking fire hazard at this point between the newspapers and the hockey cards. But, um... You got a room full of birds. Like, there's probably like a thousand fucking birds in there. It's Dad, Jimmy, or Bill. I know, son. I know. I don't know what happened. You know, after your mom got she, she sat on her deathbed that she would she would come back as a bird to visit me from time to time and. You know, the, there hasn't been much birds in the windowsill since the neighbors all let their cats roam around the neighborhood. I haven't seen a bird in months, so I just bought these budgie birds, and I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. I just left them in the room, and they were having eggs, and I loved the eggs, and there's little babies, and then the babies have babies, but then they're all inbred, and <laughs> they have six feet. I don't know what happened. None of them have wings. Dad, don't worry. I'm going to take care of this. I got it all figured out. You know, I'll bring them in. That way, you don't get in trouble for, like, animal cruelty or anything. I'm not going to rat you out. But if the animal authorities contact me and really put the pressure on, I don't know, Dad. It's been nice knowing you. I don't know. I don't know what Jimmy said to his father to tell him it's all going to be all right. Who knows? But anyway, the article didn't mention that any birds were dead or deceased. It mentioned some of them were pretty, like, you know, sick or, you know, kind of like not moving a whole lot because of overcrowding and stuff like that. And he brought them in a bunch of shoe boxes. But I imagine if you brought 838 live budgie birds to the Humane Society, there's probably at least half that, maybe even double that in corpses around the fucking house. <laughs> That's not funny. But you know what I mean? Like in a dark humor kind of way. Sad. I mean, I feel sorry for Bill if that's actually what happened. Kind of got dark there for a minute there. Hope, hope you guys could appreciate some dark humor. I'm not going to explain to you why dark humor is funny. You can Google it. It's so not funny, it's funny. Because you're not supposed to say it or hear it. But then it's like, low-key, it's like, how do we people cope with dark and depressing things? Such as these news stories. I thought I wasn't going to explain it. I explained it. Um. Yeah, I don't know. So, Jimmy is in a way kind of a hero. He probably did feel and look like a total asshole dropping off these birds for his dad. But Jimmy might also be a lying asshole. We don't know. He might have concocted this whole, my dad kept them in a room story to cover his ass. He might have been a guy that lost his job during, you know, the pandemic and decided, what's a good way to make some fucking money? I go to sell animals. He probably has more than fucking birds. He's probably got like rabbits and fucking rats and hamsters crawling all through his basement and giant fucking terrariums. Probably built them out of wood. You know? Big fucking... Got Noah's Ark in his fucking basement of fucking pet shop animals and the fucking bird room got out of hand. Just got way too fucking out of hand. So we decided, I've been over my fucking head. I, I, no one on Kijiji's buying these fucking birds anymore. I just got, They're costing more to feed than they are to sell. I can't even give them fucking away for free. That's it. I'm going to the fucking... Either that or it was like maybe his wife's idea. And he was just, he just snapped. He was like, that's it. Fuck it. She was like, you know, she went on vacation or went on a trip or went to go visit family. He's like, I'm getting rid of these fucking birds. They're ruining my fucking life. And he just like, you know, just put them in a bunch of boxes. Rounded up a bunch of birds. How the fuck do you round up birds into a bunch of boxes? I couldn't imagine. You'd have to have like a giant ass bird cage and put all the food into the bird cage after they were a little hungry and just leave it open and hope they all fly in. Could you imagine how much of a pain in the ass it would be catching all these fucking birds? Jesus Christ. 
So anyway, Jimmy rolls into the fucking humane society covered in bird shit and feathers. Feeling and looking like a stupid asshole. You have some girl probably named Beth sitting at the front desk. Jaw dropping the entire time. Huge animal rights activist too. Probably just like nails digging into her palms because she's got such a clenched fist, white knuckled, you know, and just like she she's basically blood is running down her through her fingers and fists because her fingernails are just stabbing into her palm because she's so fucking angry and she doesn't know what to do. She, all she can do is accept these animals because this irresponsible someone was irresponsible, you know, some irresponsible jackass just like you know bringing in all these animals. Like now we'll see if it, then. I was reading the article in the main society said they went through a bunch of them. You know, one of the older females, she has some issues, but she seems like she's going to be okay. One of the older female birds. So I don't know. I guess there's a humane society in Michigan probably giving away free budgie birds at this point. I don't, ex I don't know exactly what humane society was in Michigan, but I'm sure if you do your little own research and you live in that state, if you're in the market for a budgie bird or if you feel like generous and donating maybe they could use some bird feed and some i don't know what else budgie birds like like little mirrors and i don't know little stands maybe you could donate some of your time and go down to the humane society and just hold out like your pinky finger as a little perch do that for a couple hours a day just to give a bird a perch just stand on you know, I don't know. Maybe you could go down there and lay down on the floor and make snow angels out of the bird shit. Help clean up the mess. There's there's a handful of things you could do. I don't know. Probably cleaning supplies is probably overlooked. Cash donation might help. This is Budgie Bird Awareness Week people on the podcast we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna clean up we're gonna clean up animal rights one one bird shit at a time we're gonna go to bill's house we're gonna wipe down the furniture the walls the window sills the the carpets we're gonna we're gonna clean it up then we're gonna search his backyard for all the dead animal corpses <laughs> we're gonna set things right you know i don't know sounds like an absolute fucking disaster that's about it that's about all i gotta say for that and that's all i gotta say about that jenny the other thing that came up in the news that i wanted to talk about I can't believe I just went on for about 20 minutes about fucking budgie birds. The next thing I wanted to talk about was, uh, there's a thing making the news rounds. It's about a tongue eating louse. It's a, it's called a Samothwa, Samothwa. I don't know. Something like that. You probably seen it. It was shared on the, uh, nature is metal Instagram account and, uh, Joe Rogan's Instagram also shared it. So those are two pretty big popular Instagram social media accounts to share something, you know, animal and wildlife related. So it's probably making the rounds. Um, so basically a tongue eating louse. So when you hear louse, I think like head lice. But uh, it kind of, I guess, resembles like a bigger version of that. So... It's an isopod. I think isopods are fucking cool, by the way. There's like a giant isopod that like crawls around like the bottom of the ocean. And, you know, it's adapted to extreme high pressure. If I could have a pet of like any animal, it might be a like giant isopod. It's like a, it's like one of those like pill bugs you see or like one of those like, you know, they like curl up into a ball when you touch them. They're like that, but they're like giant and like they're kind of like armored looking. I don't know. They're kind of an interesting looking alien looking thing. But anyway, these t these ones are tiny. And what they do is they kind of like float. So 
all offspring of this of this giant louse um they're all born male um and the, the reason why this came up in the news recently was because it's like a new species of like a tongue-eating louse that was found it's only it's like a subspecies it's basically the same thing it's only a tiny bit different um i think it's just a tiny bit bigger it's got like a bigger mustache looking thing on it i forget what that part of the isopod's called but it's got like this thing that looks like a mustache um yeah so basically they're kind of like parasites they are parasites so they kind of like float around in the ocean you know and they wait for a part proper host and i think the only host that it's really infected so far is a certain kind of carp it's like a fish um and then once they do they uh attach to the gill you know they can get on in there uh the oldest louse will uh then go from male to female and it'll grow larger and move in towards the tongue it'll cut off the blood supply to the tongue the tongue will you know uh, atrophy and fall off and what remains of the tongue is a stump the louse then attaches itself to the stump and uh uses uh the blood that goes the blood supply as a way of sustenance and the male stay in and around the uh gills as for mating purposes and they sort of just like eat off particles i guess from when either the fish consumes and the i don't know if the uh the new replacement tongue parasite is um kind of like breaking up some of the food and like throwing it to the the rest of the squad on the gills or if um they're kind of just like filter feeding from like algae and stuff yeah it's that's basically it it's kind of horrifying it's like could you imagine that happening to us like instead of having like your tongue like you have a fucking like giant lice a louse out as like a tongue instead and like <laughs> hey baby come here often <laughs> it'd be like the most horrifying thing ever like you would never kiss somebody with a louse tongue you'd be like get the fuck away from me you got some issues you need to go see a doctor you need to get your fucking tongue removed You need to be beat to death with a stick. <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's a. I, I suggest checking out the picture of it. It's pretty creepy. It's like alien, like parasite fucking craziness. It hasn't been known to really... Inf and I don't think it's been seen to infect any other species of fish or any other species. So we don't have to worry about it stealing our tongues yet. The, the tongue snatching lou louse. There was actually another life story that came up recently too, kind of interesting that how these things always come together in like groups of news. So they found like an ancient mummy. Don't ask me where, what, or who, or I think it was South American, but uh, I could be absolutely wrong. I only like skimmed this article briefly, but um, basically they found uh, like a knit in this um mummy's hair or maybe it was in its yeah it was in its hair and what a knit is is basically like this mass that like lice will form in order to like preserve or protect eggs and consequently or subsequently from that that this knit is really good at preserving hair and like follicle like dna that it's wrapped around so they're actually able to extract dna from over 2000 year old mummies super interesting super cool because i look at like things like lice as being an absolute burden on humanity but uh, clearly it's been a burden since like 2000 years ago and i don't know it's cool how like how something that doesn't seem to really be beneficial to humanity whatsoever somehow benefits us. So we have 
these like you know lice making these nets in people's hair 2000 years ago and now modern day science were able to uh extract that dna and learn more about where we came from you know what what made us us uh what else is there to learn things that might not be in our dna today that's so apparent maybe more apparent back then it, it's a cool way of looking into the past and seeing ourselves and it's kind of thanks to this blood sucking parasite <laughs> um yeah i don't know that's a little that's another little cool thing why i don't know it's like the food chain and like even like the smallest parasitic piece of garbage animal is still useful to society and to humanity we're all on one big giant rock floating through space it's basically our rocket ship literal rock rock ship blasting through space and we're all earthlings you know every bug every blood sucking parasite every human you know said that on the last podcast it's, it's a, the theory of earthlings there was there's a couple other like interesting like parasitic animals out there i'm just going to talk about for a bit in case the listeners of this podcast aren't too familiar with them but there's a fungus that infects uh carpenter ants so basically a spore will fall onto this ant it will then inhabit parts of its brain or have access to like its neurological uh, patterns or some way of influencing it and at, when this spore is about to what do they do like bloom i guess it'll convince the ant to kind of climb up a high height dig down deep with its uh, mandibles pinch in and hold the hell on and then i guess it effectively kills the ant by bursting through its skull and it grows and it wants somewhere up high so then when it shoots off its spores when it decides to spore that it'll fall down on more suspecting ants probably in and around near the ant hill or where the colony resides to hopefully infect more horrifying but an interesting dynamic in the uh insect kingdom another interesting kind of like parasite are hair worms so these will infect grasshoppers and when they're ready to burst from the grasshopper's body they somehow affect it neurologically as well to effectively commit suicide they force the grasshopper to plunge into like a water source because this is where the hair worm will go to find a breeding partner or like a mate so and grasshoppers don't ever just jump into the water that's not something that they do like fish will eat them what like frogs like they they don't go near water they eat like plants and stuff like that they don't go near like streams and rivers like they don't go swimming they do drink water but obviously like small beads of water or whatever it'll jump in basically either killing or leave it dying and it'll like shoot out from the uh, grasshopper and then go off and it's like bigger than the grasshopper it's a long motherfucker it's like a really long leech so it looks like a hair like that's why it's called a hair worm it's like a long hair it's thicker than a hair though obviously but and then it um you know shoots out and like wiggles away like through the water like a leech kind of would swim or worm and um yeah i don't know I, I guess sometimes the grasshopper can survive that whole ordeal but for the most part it's pretty much fucked because it is in the water and now it is part of like it probably is going to be eaten so that's another kind of like terrifying way parasites can like affect behavior and it's it's kind of like how many parasites do humans have that affect our behavior without us knowing and would we be different people had we not have been affected by certain parasites like a large por portion of the population is affected by toxoplasmosis and it doesn't seem to really do anything that of note they say like a higher percentage of them are like higher at taking like bigger risk takers and take bigger risks but um 
that may not necessarily be true, but it could be. And it's like, have you not been infected with it? Would you still be a thrill seeker? Would you still be a high risk taker? We don't know. These are things to be explored and studied further, but the evidence would suggest that. Uh, yeah, I don't know. There's like a couple others, like, I think there's like a ringworm inside like bears digestive tracts and like raccoons. And if you consume like bear meat or come into contact with like raccoon poop, apparently that parasite can then pass to you. And the thing is, because you're not the typical host that it's used to, it won't end up in your digestive tract. It'll like won't know where to go. It'll end up in like random spots. And you can get like this parasite, it's kind of like a worm showing up in like your eyeballs and stuff like that, or like random spots of your brain and horrifying. So avoid raccoon poop. Filthy little garbage pandas with their long beaky noses, beaky nose cats, bandit cats. Um, I don't know. I wouldn't necessarily eat bear meat. People always say like bear meat's really good, like. If you had like bear meat from a bear that's been like eating like a lot of blueberries, you can kind of taste like the blueberry in it. But like bears do consume like a lot of garbage, you know. Um, they have like, since they're like an alpha predator, they have a lot of bioaccumulation as well. So I don't know if they're like the best, like you're not supposed to really eat predators. You can, but like you're not, I wouldn't suggest it. And then, um, yeah. Um, I don't really know what else to say. I mean, I told my story about Jimmy Buffett, not Jimmy Buffett, you know, Jimmy, the bird wrangler earlier in the podcast. Uh, yeah, I don't really got much else to say, guys. I think that might be the end. I didn't really put together too much of a show for you here. I kind of just did it off the cuff. I just saw a couple articles and thought they needed some talking to So I guess we got a nice little half episode here for you guys. <laughs> episode 11.5 of the Nature's Epion podcast. Um, neighbor's dogs are barking. They must be out and about. But then, um, yeah, so if you're enjoying this content that I'm putting out, uh, you know, follow, like, subscribe, notification bell. All those sweet things that help buff it up, keep it going, you know, support. Um, thanks, everybody, that's, you know, tuning in and listening from different parts of the world. I think it's super cool looking up on my analytics there and being like, huh, like there's a guy there or there's people there. I don't know if you're a guy or girl, but um, let's see what we got here. We got some people in Arizona, south of Phoenix. Shout out. Shout out to you guys. Um, you're kind of near Casa Grande. Casa Grande. I don't know what you call it there. We got some people in Dallas, Texas. What up, Dallas? What do we got? We're big west of Wichita. Kind of near Kingman. Or west of Kingman, east or east of Pratt and Kingman, west of Wichita. Shout out to you guys. There, there's a few listeners out that way. I guess. Don't know why. Maybe we got some. We got a little bit of notice in Ashburn and Washington. Shout out to you guys. Uh, shout out to Hamilton, Ontario. Shout out to Barrie, Ontario. Uh, those are in Canada. Then we got big listeners in Dublin, Ireland, and Brussels and uh, Belgium. Thanks for uh, tuning in, everyone. Thanks for listening. Hopefully you enjoyed this episode. I'm going to try to get you guys some better content, some better episodes going. Got some stuff in the pipe I'm working on, but, you know, Certain people I like to do. I got some guests I want to bring on. If if anyone's listening to this that happens to be like a wildlife photographer of some sort, and they want they're comfortable coming on the podcast, I mean, by all means, 
you know, reach out to me on Instagram. You can find me at uh, Epion Explores. And, uh, yeah, just DM me and I'll check out your stuff, you know, and we'll see if we can put together a little episode just talking about the craft, the hobby, the fun, the highs and lows. You know, hopefully, you know, we'll get some people to buy some of your, uh, I don't know, what are they, uh, prints and stuff like that. Or any other kind of like outdoor wilderness, like hobbyists, you know, trying to make a, a living off of, you know, stuff like that. Love to have you on. Shoot the shit. Shit the chat. Uh, Yeah. So without further ado, guys, have a good one and uh, I'll talk to y'all soon. Uh, cheerio.